bust a gut in, match up. Sanguinetti gets inside, he scores! Vroom, vroom, NASCAR time. If you've watched a Rutgers lacrosse game recently, you've probably heard the term NASCAR offense. But what exactly makes Rutgers anything like a 200 mile per hour race? The philosophy dates back to former offensive coordinator Jim Mitchell, who allowed offensive minded guys like Christian Mazzone to thrive in two way roles at midfield. But the NASCAR offense got its first big break in the national spotlight during last year's NCAA tournament. The flashbulb moment everyone remembers from Rutgers' first round victory over Lehigh came in the fourth quarter when Jonathan DeHenio won back-to-back face-offs and found Connor Kirst for two goals in a span of 13 seconds. These lightning quick strikes were backbreaking for Lehigh and as Deemer Class explains, a product of Rutgers NASCAR philosophy. I think this is such a key mindset of NASCAR's face-off guys, long poles, empowered to push tempo and make these decisions and know that they're not going to get their heads ripped off for making a mistake. With Rutgers staring down another NCAA tournament appearance in 2022, let's dig into the nuts and bolts of the NASCAR off offense, starting with that first fast break off the face-off versus Lehigh. This is like your classic four on three off the break. Rutgers face-off guy does a great job winning the ball forward, and then he's really able to initiate the four on three, recognizes the quick slide off the point, puts the pass on the stick, and then sets cursed up for a big time step down. But NASCAR is more than just winning a face-off forward and pushing a four on three fast break. Rutgers is constantly looking to create numbers advantages by turning defense into offense. Watch how they create a six on four situation here, thanks to an opportunistic play by goalie Colin Kirst on the run out of the cage. I think this really speaks to like the athleticism and the tempo of the whole team. Curse makes a big save, sprints right after it. His immediate thought is push it up the field. They end up getting a six on four. The long pole, first one down, gets to the crease. Guys aren't stopping at the midline. They're not stopping at the top of the box. This is a great job drawing and hitting the throwback to the trailing midi, making reads, assessing the D, and pushing tempo. This all happens within 15 seconds of getting the ball. Here's a moment from this year against Ohio State where Rutgers eagerness to push transition lures the Buckeyes into a bad substitution and an eventual goal in a five on four situation. So this is one where these are the types of situations that open up when you are comfortable pushing and you have poles that are comfortable carrying over whether they're close or long stick middies. It's very tough as offensive players if you like pause it there to to make subbing decisions on the fly, throws it, and then boom, he doesn't even turn to see there's a two on one on the back side. Now we're going from a six on five to a five on four based on the confusion. And I think that's something that is just hard to stick with sometimes if you're not locked in. Even when Rutgers doesn't have numbers in transition, head coach Brian Breck gives his players the green light in four on four and five on five situations. Here's one where midfielder Tommy Coyne, who only had three shots on the season up until this point, takes advantage of the unsettled defense and scores. Quick outlet up the field. They're subbing two guys off, but it's a great 4v4. Flatter break. They're not in your typical high point. So this gives, I think, a little more room for those two-way defensive middies to dodge either way in early offense and kind of that green situation. Great right to right, great shot. Here's another moment in that same game where Kirst makes a pair of saves and Rutgers is off in transition. From there, Mitch Bartolo uses a little muscle to come out on top in a five on five. Slides are longer. They're not really in a settled defense package. Like, test the waters, see what you got. They're still subbing. Bartolo has been having a great season. He's got good range. He's really tough to cover with his size. And when you've got guys that you trust to make those decisions, you just got to let them loose, you know? And when the defense stops the break, the NASCAR engine doesn't stop revving. Rutgers will look for chances to score early in the shot clock, especially in situations like this, when the other team has multiple offensive players trapped on defense. 
So what we're looking for here is like, are the omitties still trapped? They know how big of a deal it is to get back in the hole. You got 10 trapped, you got 55 trapped, you got 47 trapped. They're just not sure who to cover, confusion, hang up. That's fantastic. And again, look, still 61 seconds on the shot clock. And teams aren't out of the woods once they get their defensive subs on either. Rutgers is constantly looking to strike in chaotic moments like this one before the defense even has a chance to mark up in six on six. I mean, this is great. This is a great pass down, pick down opportunity. It's a slower break, but they're still in NASCAR. Their best player comes off this for his hands-free step down shot. You know, a little pump fake, kind of probes the gap, steps in, shot. No offensive philosophy is without its flaws though. And sometimes the Scarlet Knights wind up with a flat tire while running the NASCAR offense. Remember Jim Mitchell from the beginning of this video? He has Princeton well versed in the principles of NASCAR, so it wasn't surprising to see the Tigers get the best of Rutgers earlier this season. Then there's Maryland. The Terps make everyone look bad, but there's a certain weakness they were able to exploit while running up an eight goal win on Rutgers. One of the downsides is time of possession. So if you're playing a lot of defense, I think that's something that the players need to always take into consideration and understand. And so I think that game flow piece is definitely one thing that's really important we always called it KYP, know your personnel. I think that's truly important in an offense like this. Okay, so Rutgers hasn't taken over the Big Ten yet, but their commitment to the principles of NASCAR have helped lift this program to new heights. The Scarlet Knights have spent the entire 2022 season in the top 20, peaking multiple times inside the top five. That wouldn't be possible without the speed, trust and opportunism that have become hallmarks of Rutgers NASCAR.